Welcome back to this week's three minute quick tip video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about all the different ways that you can do weight bearing for the arm if you have had a neurologic injury that has impacted your arm. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, the goal is to empower you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to optimize your recovery after a neurologic injury. And on Thursdays, I try and give you just one quick tip that you can easily add to your home exercise program. And this week's tip is upper extremity weight bearing or arm weight bearing. Arm weight bearing is extremely valuable in the early stages of recovery to activate muscles that are flaccid or limp or not working at all. But also in the later stages, weight bearing can help to minimize the impact of spasticity, which is that involuntary contraction pulling your arm in. And depending on where you're at in the recovery process and in the different Areas of the arm that might be tight or contracted, meaning your arm doesn't get fully straight, will determine what position is the best for you in doing this to get really good upward approximation through that joint, get good feedback to your brain to remind your brain that there is an arm over here, which is the starting point of decreasing that spasticity and activating the right muscles to get that arm moving again. So the first one that we usually do in the early stages when someone doesn't have any type of spasticity or no tone or what we call low tone is just having someone sit with their hand on a table. Usually in the early stages, you still have pretty good wrist range of motion. Best way to do that is to kind of allow your fingers to curl off the side slightly. And then we use these things called Dyson pads. They're great. They just provide um, a little bit, take away some of the slipperiness of the surface or add a little friction to the surface so your hand doesn't slide off the front. And then the way that you would do this on your own, if you're not working with a therapist, is to use your non-involved arm, put place that hand kind of next to your side. You want it pretty close to your side, maybe about five inches away from your hip. Take your uninvolved hand, place it behind your elbow. So you can pull your elbow straight, right? If your arm is limp, you don't have a lot of strength yet. You wanna keep that elbow straight and then you just wanna lean onto that arm. If that arm starts to buckle, you have this hand here to kind of pull that elbow straight and lean. Now, if it's a little bit of uncomfortable, that is okay. Some of that might just be because you haven't been weight bearing on your arm for a few weeks or a few months. My kind of rule of thumb is anything under a five is acceptable, five over 10. When it starts to creep up over a five, it can be problematic either because there could be an injury or it can develop into what we call learned non-use is where your brain just kind of has an aversion to that activity. So there is a balance here. It might be a little bit uncomfortable and most likely you're not gonna have a zero pain, but you'd like to try and keep that pain under a five. And lean onto that arm, if it buckles, straighten it back out. Once you can do that in sitting, the next thing you would wanna do is take that into standing. Especially for those of you that are in the early stages, I'm just gonna kinda of give you a window into the future. Many times, once you start standing and walking and you have that additional stress on your system, you will start to notice or you might start to notice that that's when you develop some involuntary movements in the arm, pulling the arm up into this direction. If you can tackle this movement early in your recovery, you're gonna minimize the potential of having this involuntary contraction in your arm as you move further down the road. So as soon as you get good at doing this in sitting and you ha are safe to stand up, then you would wanna take this into standing where your hand is now on a bedside table, pretty much at the level of right about your hip. And then again, you're gonna do the same thing, just leaning onto the arm. Once you get really good at that and you feel like you can lean onto the arm to make it functional, you can snap, now add what we call like a pre-gate activity where you can do some forward backward stepping with your opposite leg. Again, we're kind of looking into the future and looking at the position that we want the arm in when you are walking. 
But now let's go to the other group of you guys who you cannot get your elbow straight. The first method I would try is just to add an elbow mobilizer. Sometimes it's just that you can't get yourself into the right position to get your hand around to block that elbow. So the easiest fix for that is do the same exercises that we just did, only you're gonna add an elbow immobilizer. Make sure you get the longest one possible. You really want something that goes from right in your armpit all the way down to your elbow. You really need that kind of lever arm or you need that length past the elbow or else your arm will bend up and you'll just bend inside the splint. So you really want something as long as possible. If you're really tall or you're a really big person, I recommend going to a knee immobilizer. When you go to the knee immobilizer, you might just have to use some additional straps to get it small enough to fit around your arm, but the extra length really does help. So if you get a knee immobilizer and you strap it as tight as you can, and it still seems a little bit bad sometimes you can just uh, take a belt or something and just wrap that around it I use these blue straps that work really well I have many of these laying around they're pretty cheap you can wrap one of those around it just to make it a little bit tighter you want it really snug and as long as possible but now let's go and get ahead and get to those of you who cannot straighten your arm out if that is the case you can definitely still do weight bearing you would just do weight bearing through your elbow. So the easiest way to do that is just to set something up on a mat or if you have a bedside table, a height adjustable table, you can use that. You want it if your arm is by your side and your shoulders are level, meaning you're not like this and you're not like this, but they're actually parallel to the floor going across. That's the height of the step that you wanna use. And then just place that arm on there. A lot of you will have to hold your arm down, then you're just gonna lean and lean. And then method number two is on your stomach. You want your elbow directly under your shoulder and same thing, you're gonna lean onto that arm. Now make sure your arm's not shooting out this way or it's not collapsing underneath you that way. Those are the two most common mistakes that I see. You wanna make sure it's right under your elbow, your shoulder and that you're leaning onto it and that it's as vertical, this part of your arm is as vertical as possible. And then lean off and then back onto it and back off. Now, if you wanna try the stomach method and you're not sure how to roll your stomach, I've linked a video in the description below where I go over a step-by-step -step process on how to roll to your stomach. But that is it for this video. I hope I got this video in in three minutes. If you're new to this channel and you like these kind of videos, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Also, make sure you come back on Sunday when I do deeper dives and go more in depth on a lot of the movement problems that can occur after a neurologic injury. But that is it for this video. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.